Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about 12 Factor App. Ta -da! And 12 Factor App is knowledge that has been gathered by a lot of different people that have built web services or services in a cloud environment. So these small microservices and when you're creating a cloud of microservices, there are some good factors that you need to use in order to make your production environment and your development environment as good as possible. So this is 12 factors that you will add to your uh, system in order to get a smooth working environment. First off, we have code base. And code base, in this case, we are talking about the actual different services and code that you are working on, and you need to have them tracked under uh, revision control. So you need to actually track them in Git or in Subversion, Mercurial, whatever, but you need to track them in one place. And that is because you are building this specific web service, but other people that will help you out need to also work with the same code. And if you use a good revision controlling system, you might also have triggers that can actually build your application and push it out to production. So your workflow becomes a much uh, more streamlined and you get a better result. And you can also track changes. You can uh, see when a specific change actually were added to the code base and you can revert changes if something is not working in your environment. So you need to roll back. So having a revision control system or a CVS is a really good option. Next up, we have dependencies. And dependencies is something that is really hard to track, something that's really hard to work with. And if you're creating microservices and something that you need to scale up and scale down, it's very important to look into your dependencies. You need to look at what kind of dependencies are required for the application, remove all extra dependencies that are not required, and also explicitly uh, declare all of them. So if you need specific th things and those things in turn need other things, then you need to explicitly uh, say which version are we using for this web service. And the reason is if you're spinning up something new in an environment up on the internet, then you want to have the same result every time. And if you are spinning up something and the dependencies can change on different services, that could lead to hard problems to debug and hard thing, problems to find and uh, troubleshoot. Next up, we have the config. And this is also important that you actually have somewhere to store your configuration and that the application does not have the configuration built in. You need to separate the running application from the configuration that is required for that application. Because in the development environment, you have specific resources that you are using, and that should be configured in a specific way. But when you're going to production, those resources have totally different uh, waypoints and different connection points and routing. So it's important to separate the configuration from your application. Next up, we have backing services. And this is what we are talking about, the other resources that we connect to our application. So when we talked about the configuration, we talked about different endpoints or different services that we were required to have in order to run our application. And these are backing services like databases, disk storage, and other things that we are required for the application to run. So we need to uh, treat these services as attached resources. So these are resources that you have outside of your application that you add into your application. And 
you need to have them separated. So you can't have anything inside of your application or inside of the environment that the application is running. They need to be external resources because when you have your application in your production environment, it's totally different resources that you will connect to and run this application against if then if you are in your development environment and these should also just be configured and be external to the application so if you have something that can change that is not static it should be outside of the application all data resources next up we have the workflow of build release and run and this is also important that we actually strictly separate these stages. So we have somewhere where we build our application and make it ready for uh, pr uh, production or release to either staging environment, to your production environment or your, to your development environment. So we have some place where you build the application. Then we have the release phase where we add the configuration to the specific application and make it ready for running in a specific environment. And then we have the run phase and that is when we are pushing it to the actual um, cluster or wherever it's gonna run. So these are separate jobs and separate um, stages that the application can be in and we need to separate these because if we are not doing that then there might be things that creeps in that makes it really hard to both debug process or perhaps it becomes brittle because if you have something that is configured during the run phase then that might not be working every time that you spin up a new resource. You might need to, uh, it might break if you want more of them. So it's important to separate these stages. Next up, we have processes. And this is what we need to figure out when it comes to this, these applications that are running. They should be stateless processes. They should be separated applications. They should have one job and doing it well. So this old uh, Unix philosophy, you create something that does it one job on one place. It can be multi-threaded inside a process. We are not talking about threading here. We are talking about one thing doing one thing very well. So there, we need to separate these into stateless processes. So we have a process doing some job. It connects to different resources but it has no state. So we, if this process is thrown away and then started again, it will be able to start at the same position or be close to that position uh, the, that it were before uh, and work in a similar way, we will not lose that much by killing this process. So it should be statelet and work with remote resources to have state. Next up, we have the port binding. And this is some way to separate what is actually connecting into your application from the actual application logic. And the important part here is that both for security, that you don't want to give a specific port to the internet without any extra checks or uh, having any, any firewall in the way or anything like that. But it's also because of scalability. For, because when you are, have something that have a specific port, specific IP and everything is locked down, then it's very hard to actually spin up another process side by this and actually divide the traffic if you can't really configure these things. So the port binding and exporting services behind port binding is important because you want to have different services be, be available in different amounts. So you want to be able to scale them up and down. 
And here we come to the scale out. This is a concurrency. It's very connected to the other things that we talked about because we have this process model that is one thing does one thing very well and we have the port binding and the external resources. That means that these stateless processes can be killed if they are not needed or if they are uh, broken and so on. And we can spin up new one of those if we are needed. And if we want, for instance, if we have a web service and then we have some business logic application and it goes really hard, it can't really process all that traffic, then spin up four more of it. And then you have five times the load that you can handle with these stateless processes. So you can con concurrently do a lot more work if they are stateless, so you can uh, create more of them and then kill them when you're not needing them anymore. Next up we have disposability and that was what I talked about here. It should be very easy to spin up new processes and then kill them when they are not needed. So they will gracefully shut down and you will not lose any state. Uh, but you are not, no, no process is really precious. If one process dies, the whole logic of the program should not die with it. it. Every process should be able to shut down and come up again and be in a valid state to continue running your application. So they should be disposable and uh, available for restarting. Next up, we need to have a dev development and product uh, production parity. So we need to have things that are similar in both production and in your development environment. So for instance, if we are running Kubernetes with Docker images, then we will try to develop in these Docker images so they have the same kind of environment as the production environment. Because if we have parity between production, staging, dev, and other systems, then it's very easy to debug and figure out what is actually going wrong in the different processes. If there are totally different these environments, then it's very hard to actually figure out what was wrong in production that we can't reproduce in our dev environment. Next up we have logs and logs is a totally <laughs> The separate chapter for itself. It's very hard to do logging well, uh, but one thing that you can think about your logs is that they are actually a stream of events. If something happens in your application, that could be put on a queue and be streamed as some, some information that is coming from your application. And if you're thinking about log events like a stream, it's easier to handle them and send them to a separate application, write them down to disk, or if you want them to be into a logging environment where you can search and look at the logs, it's very much easier to handle them that way than to handle them as only a file or only uh, something that you send over the network. If you're looking at them as streaming data, then you can actually do all of these kind of things. You can stream them to multiple different resources at the same time and get a good flow for your logging environment, which will help you in the debugging process and in the troubleshooting. So admin processes is jobs that you need to do. For instance, if you need to clean up your database, if you need to remove um, customer information because it gets stale or if you need to remove uh, old uh, offers or old um, shopping carts or whatever data you are working with, you can get too much of it and some data might not be interesting to have there anymore. So if you have some process that you need to run once in a while or only one time, then handle that one-off process that you need to run in your environment as one of the um, tasks or one of the processes 
like any other process in your environment. Because if you do that, then you can spin up one of these admin processes and when it's done, it can be killed. And if you need to run it again in a month's time, just spin it up again and make it do the task again. So that makes things much easier to handle and it's also a way to run these kind of tasks in the same environment as your production, development and so on. And if you need to test them, you can run them first in your development environment as any other process. Then you just spin one of those up in your staging environment and see that that actually works. And if you, when you're certain of that task working in your development and staging environment, you can push that to production and it can go off doing its job. And you can be secure in that this has already been run in the other environment that is similar to my production environment, so there should not be any problems. This was what I wanted to cover today. And uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Maybe this 12-factor application, good practices are ingrained in you. Maybe you are, are creating a lot of these services already. Or perhaps this is something totally new to you. And this is something that you can start using in your environment today. If you like this kind of videos, then please give this video a like share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.